when it comes to dealing with the absolute and percentage, obviously for each piece of equipment, whether it's a thermometer with degrees Celsius or whether it's a stopwatch with seconds, I need to now make it so that each of these units and each of these uncertainties can all be made into one. So obviously I can't compare and just add a percentage for set, or can't just add an absolute value for seconds and an absolute value for degrees Celsius. That doesn't make any sense. So I can only add them if their units are the same. So how I would make them be the same unit is first I'll convert them all to a percentage. So when it comes to doing that, you'd make a separate table. You'd list out all your pieces of equipment. At this stage, you're only using pieces of equipment that you would have actually used to measure something. So you're putting in all of your pieces of equipment. I'll just block this off, sorry, it's not confusing. Um, find out your absolute uncertainties for each of them. That'll be just kind of reading them off whatever the piece of equipment is for most of the glassware. You know that if it's not given to you, you have to deal with them differently compared to if they're digital or analog. So you know with analog, digital, you're just taking your smallest um, increment that can go up on the scale. And for analog, you're taking that smallest increment and dividing it by two. So you know you have to treat both of them separately. But for most of the piece of equipment you'll have used, you literally just read it off the piece of equipment and that'll fill in this absolute uncertainty. Now we need to think about converting that absolute uncertainty to a percentage uncertainty. For each piece of equipment, or you can do it as a whole, but you probably will want to think about because that percentage uncertainty takes into account what your absolute uncertainty is relative to what you are trying to measure, you probably will want to take, you'll want to consider the fact that you will, for example, have used that thermometer to measure a variety of different temperatures, which means that with just do you take your highest value? Do you take your lowest value? Do you take an average, etc.? These are the things that you kind of need to think about when converting this absolute value into a percentage. So there's two kind of main approaches that people take for this. First one is a lot of people deal with just average values. So I'm just going to use the thermometer as the example because it's really easy. Um, if you know that your uncertainty for your thermometer is this, and let's say hypothetically over the course of five seconds you measured these different temperatures. Obviously, if I was to convert an uncertainty for 3 versus 15, I get two widely different percentages. So I can do one of two things. With my average values, essentially what I do is I just average out the temperatures that I would have measured. That gives me an average value and I calculate my uncertainty based on that. Or I can take what's called a conservative approach, where again with the same data set, I look at, am I going to do an average? Okay, actually, I don't know if that's the best idea here because there is such a wide discrepancy. So maybe here to be conservative or to, it's almost like looking at the worst case scenario. How wrong could my, how bad could my results be as a worst case scenario? And as a scientist, realistically, we're supposed to be as critical as possible. Now, I'm not saying you have to do the conservative approach, but you can just to justify why it's worth considering doing the worst case possible. You might say, okay, three degrees, grand, my conservative approach, I'm going to do three degrees and calculate my percentage uncertainty based on that. I'm, not, I'm going to ignore the rest of the values. There is justification for using either of these, depending on... Um, the piece of equipment that you're using, what you're trying to measure relative to the overall data set. Um, there's a, loads of different justifications and there isn't necessarily one right and one wrong. It really is a case of what best fits the piece of, the, like, the piece of research that you're actually trying to do. And it actually doesn't really matter so long as you justify it. And so long as you point out, oh, you chose to use the average method for this, you chose to use the conservative method for this, you chose to use the average overall you choose to use the conservative overall because of, and then pointing out why that is. So let's say you've reached the stage where you have um, got all of your absolute uncertainties. You've converted them into percentage uncertainties. So now it's the next bit is dealing with this. What do you actually want to do with that? So now that you've put all of these into the, you've got your uncertainties for all your pieces of equipment, you've put them all into something that's comparable for all of the different pieces of equipment. What you would do is sum them. So however much you could be wrong by, you might be off by one degree, by half a second, by whatever, all of those things add up. 
So we take into account the sum of all of those percentage uncertainties. Once you've done that, convert it back to an absolute value. So let's say, for example, you added all them up and you realized you could be off by um, plus 2%. And your final value, let's say, hypothetically, you are measuring temperature. And your average temperature, or your final temperature that you measured was 50 degrees Celsius. Then you would say, okay, 50 degrees Celsius, I'm off by plus or minus, that's a division sign, I'm off by plus or minus 2%. So I'll convert that 2% back into a degree Celsius. And that's what becomes my final uncertainty for my value. So it tells me overall, this is the final value that I got. This is how much I could be wrong by. So that's all to do with the propagation of uncertainties. Just to talk you through quickly, three quick tips and how this stuff is useful. So the first thing, check that your number of decimal places that you're given for your final value is the same as what you're giving in your uncertainty. That's just a really common small mistake people make. And it really indicates to the uh, examiner of your IA, I don't really actually understand what my uncertainties are really about. So that's kind of the point of doing that. Um, two other things, just to identify. You should hopefully have a literature value so for whatever you're trying to measure. So let's say you're trying to measure the temperature of something, you should hopefully have a literature value. Maybe your literature value tells you that it's 51 degrees Celsius. If your percentage uncertainty means that your value could be either it could be 50 degrees Celsius, but maybe it could be 49, or it could be up to 51 degrees Celsius. So this tells you the range, the same way that we talked about here, how you could calculate the range based on your uncertainty. So once you've converted this percentage back into a value in degrees Celsius, that will allow you to calculate a range. In that range, if you find that your literature value falls within that range, it allows you to at least consider the idea that your data could be valid. Now, if your literature value was 645 degrees and your range is 49 to 51 based on the value that you got and your percentage uncertainty, yeah, probably not so valid. But it does let you, it, it allows you to at least um, mathematically kind of calculate how valid actually is your data rather than just going, well, I think my experiment's great, so my data must be great and everything's valid and I'm a great scientist. So, you know, it's like a more, it's a mathematical way of actually calculating these things. So I just noted down here, tip, link your uncertainty to your errors. And if your uncertainty is greater than your error, so your difference in your experimental and your literature values, what your error is. So if your uncertainty is greater than your error, then maybe your data is valid. And that's something then that you can explore. You can think of it also as percentage error is like measuring your accuracy and percentage uncertainty is like measuring your precision. So just a reminder, accuracy is how close you are to the true value. Precision is how close your values are to each other. So it just allows you to kind of think about those kind of things. Other points of discussion. So this last section now, this all kind of goes into your conclusion. And you can consider then talking about, OK, how off am I? Why am I so off? Did I have, you know, small values like 0.1%? 0.01% and then I had 45% uncertainty from my burette. Well, you can say, you know, but point out the fact that most of your uncertainty was attributed to this and look at the significance of that. So to be honest, there's loads of different ways that you can approach this and it just kind of depends on if you justify them or not.